Hello, it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day 2018, and today we're going to talk about a great graphic novel series, March. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the History Geek Teacher Vlog. My name is Eric Langhorst. I'm a teacher in Liberty, Missouri. And today on Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday 2018, I wanted to talk a little bit about one of my favorite graphic novel series, and that is the series March. This is a series of graphic novels that are uh, based off of the life of Representative John Lewis. Uh, John Lewis is a, a congressman from the 5th District in Georgia. Um, Representative Lewis is one of the heroes of the Civil Rights era, and um, he really talks about several events from his life in a graphic novel format. Uh, this is something that I purchased a couple years ago. Uh, my daughters have read it. I've had it in my classroom. Um, it's just a great resource for young people to learn a little bit more about the civil rights movement. So it's actually three separate books. Uh, the first one came out in 2013. The second one came out in 2015. And then the, the third book, came out in 2016. So um, obviously at this point you can purchase all three of them together, which is how I would recommend um, purchasing it. The first book focuses on the uh, the early life of John Lewis. It's a great story. It's kind of inner, uh, weaved a little bit with like modern times and things. Um, the beginning of the book kind of talks a little bit about um, President Obama's inauguration. So it's kind of weaved into that particular modern day story. Um, but the first book talks about uh, Representative Lewis's role in some of the early sit-ins and how he got involved in the civil rights movement. The first book is the shorter of the three. Um, this is about 100 pages. Um, I think the first time I read it, I probably went through it in a little over an hour or so. Um, beautifully illustrated. I'll show some pictures here on the video, but um, beautifully illustrated. Um, Nate Powell does a great job. He's illustrated several other nonfiction type of graphic novels and does an amazing job. I should also note that it is co-written by Andrew Aiden. And uh, towards the end, I'll talk a little bit about the history of how this book came up about, which is actually one of the, the really interesting parts of this series. So the first book is about uh, the sit-ins. And then the second book talks mostly about um, the Freedom Writers. And uh, it's a little bit longer. Uh, I believe the second book is um, about 175 pages or so. So this one's a little bit longer. And then the third book focuses on the March in uh, Selma and Bloody Sunday. And this one's a little bit longer than the second one. This one's about 250 pages. So um, they kind of progressively get a little bit longer as you go through. Um, but they're great, great books describing um, the civil rights movement in the 50s and the 60s. The March Trilogy in itself is a great resource for any classroom, but I also wanted to share just a little bit about the history of how this book came about. Uh, I was looking up some research and, and doing a little bit of a background on it, and it's a really a fascinating story. Back in 1957, there was a comic book that came out called Martin Luther King and the Montgomery Story. Uh, it came out in 1957. Um, Representative Lewis remembers being about 15 or so at the time and seeing this. It was a 10 cent comic book, and it was a comic book about Martin Luther King Jr. and basically using nonviolence as a way to uh, protest against injustices. And the way that this book sort of comes about is that um, Andrew Aiden, one of the, uh, the staff members on Lewis's um, congressional staff, is talking about how as a college student, he wrote a master's thesis about the impact of that comic book. And he had always encouraged Representative Lewis to maybe do some type of graphic novel or comic book about his life. John Lewis has written a very successful book about his life in a traditional sense, um, but they wanted him to maybe do something with a comic book. So um, that's kind of what spurred this entire series. And then of course they got Nate Powell involved. And as I said earlier, Nate Powell's done some really great work with nonfiction, um, also a little bit with the same genre. Uh, so if you wanna check out some of his other books, he's done some really good things. Um, but just the background of how a comic book from 1957 about the civil rights movement really ultimately kind of spurred this, which in its own right becomes a New York Times bestseller. It won the National Book Award, um, all kinds of just accolades for this particular series comes out of that original comic from 1957. 
If you don't have a copy of March in your classroom, it is a classroom purchase that I would encourage. It's a great way to introduce students to the civil rights movement, and I think we're seeing a lot more acceptance of graphic novels in the classroom. I know I personally picked up several different graphic novels on American history topics out in San Francisco at the recent NCSS conference, and I'll be reviewing some of those as we go through the spring. Um, but it's just a great thing to have in the classroom. Um, when I purchased it uh, about a year or so ago, um, I got it as a um, three book set, comes in a nice little box, and currently on Amazon it's at about $30, so uh, pretty reasonable. If you purchase each book separately, I think that it runs about $12, $15 a piece. So kind of save a little bit of money, get all three of them, and I can guarantee that as your students read book one, they're going to ask to read book two, book three, so it's kind of nice to have them all in one little place and it comes in a nice little box with it as well. So that's it for this episode of History Geek Teacher. I hope you're having a great second semester. Uh, go ahead and like the video down below if you like it. Uh, also subscribe to our vlog. We always have new and uh, different topics coming out on a regular basis. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that like button as well. And if you've used March in the classroom or if you have ideas about using March in the classroom, go ahead and leave a comment in the uh, YouTube comments down below and we can keep the conversation going. So um, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, remember, history is so much more than just a bunch of boring old dead guys. Until next time, bye.